episode of the Liam Podcast. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been back here. Things are going to be a little different around here now, and I'm excited to be relaunching this thing. You know, I started the podcast about three years ago. It was in the springtime, and I'd just been starting to get into making videos and things. And the whole reason I did it was it just seemed like the best way for me to be able to continue making videos throughout the summer as I waited for the winter to come. It was a lot of fun and I learned a lot about production, about audio and lighting and all that jazz. And I really enjoyed all the things I learned from my friends. You know, I had a lot of really close friends on the podcast and it was cool that there was things about them I didn't even know. I really enjoyed those conversations. And yeah, we did those for about a year and then Geez, I don't even know when the last podcast episode was. And that's because, uh, you know, my focus ended up being more towards the videos on my channel. I've been having fun making those and stoked where that progression is going. I'm definitely not at the place that I want to be with them yet. I think there's a lot more room to grow there. But I also felt there was a space for those videos with sort of the entertainment and all the snowboarding and stuff. And I wanted to, you know, keep them fast paced and entertaining, just kind of in the direction they're going. But I felt like I was missing a way to really connect with my audience and to sort of provide value to you guys. So I wanted to revamp the podcast in a way that we can connect on a weekly basis and I can share things about my life that just don't necessarily fit in the other weekly videos. Also, you know, selfishly want to kind of improve my storytelling abilities and my ability to talk on camera. So what better way than sitting in front of camera for 10 minutes a week and just talking and doing my best to improve in that way. So podcast format, they're going to be shorter form, about five to 10 minutes. And then it's mostly going to be me. I'll have guests on when it works out. But the idea of just doing a solo podcast is that I know every week I can just be here and I can do it kind of thing and, you know, not have to rely on other people's schedules. But I'm happy to have guests on. I look forward to having a couple just whenever it lines up. They're going to be weekly uploaded. So every Monday you'll see me here. For the episode, I plan to kind of either riff on a topic, either something I've been thinking about, something that's either come up in the audience or I don't know, just pretty much anything I feel like talking about. <laughs> and then it's just gonna be some questions. And I'm gonna do that every week. It's gonna be pretty simple, pretty easy, but I'm hoping it can provide value to you guys. And that's the whole point of this thing is that this can be, yeah, just something valuable for the community. Cause I'd like to give back anything I know to you guys. Like I always think about when I was a super young kid in Rossland, that's where I grew up. There was a really supportive snowboard scene there. Um, definitely very grateful for all the people that helped me up when I was there, but you're limited to the fact of it's a you know 3,500 person town. There's just not a whole lot of exposure. I think I would have really benefited from having a forum like this where I could ask someone that's you know a bit closer to the snowboard scene than I was and who has spent, you know, I've been snowboarding for 17 years now. And as much as I haven't made it as a you know professional snowboarder, um, I'm so fortunate to be on so many amazing snowboarders and been able to gain a lot of knowledge, not only from them, but from coaches and snowboard clubs and friends and just like just being in the Whistler snowboard scene. I would love to be able to give that back to, you know, my younger self and to, I don't know, just share things with them because I think I would have been really stoked on that. So I'm hoping that maybe there's some kid in some small town that this can reach and it can stoke him out on snowboarding and he can go out there and feel like he's a part of this bigger snowboard community because he is. Yeah. So that's the why. That's the reason I'm doing this. Um, I don't know if it's going to go well. It could go very poorly. I'm thinking I should maybe get rid of this swivel seat because when I'm nervous, I just swivel around in this seat, but it's pretty fun. So I'm going to keep it. And now to get to the questions. So I fielded these questions from my Instagram. I just put out a little story and some people got back to me. Huge shout out to those people who did. In the future, if you have a question you want answered, uh, just leave it in the comments below and I'll answer it in the next video. You know, I have a relatively small community subscribed to me here, but I think there is some benefit to that because for you guys, if you do have a question, I'm definitely going to see it and I will answer it for you. So that's cool. Okay, questions. So which one do I want to start off with? From Serge. This is the homie from Instagram. He left me three questions and number one being best snowboarder from the interior. Now this is entirely my opinion, but I think a lot of people would agree. And this depends on what you call the interior. But if we're talking like just interior BC, pretty broad. Mark Sollers is probably top of the pick for me. Um, he's from Kelowna, which is pretty, you know, interior Okanagan, whatever. And yeah, huge Mark Sollers fan. So that would be my number one pick. If he wants to get more specific, like interior kind of like Kootenays area, I'm going to give it to both of them because they're brothers. And that's Mike and Ryan Turner. I was big fans of their snowboarding growing up. I actually remember my mom wanted me to take lessons when I started snowboarding and I actually took my very first snowboard lesson with my mom. And that's when she started snowboarding. She still snowboards to this day. So that was cool. Hi, mom. You watch these. Appreciate it. And I remember telling her for my lesson, I wanted my coach to be, I think I said Mike Turner at the time. I was like, yeah, just get the Turners. So it'll be, it'll be easy. <laughs> Not knowing how any of that stuff worked. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, they're super good. I was fortunate I got to do a bit of riding with them in the Kootenays when I was uh, still around there. So yeah, that was really cool. 
and being like my favorite snowboarders growing up. So, okay, I'm going to go away from Surge. Let's get one from Truth. So Truth wrote in, said, are you going to get another drone? Um, he's probably referring to the fact that I crashed my drone into the Chickens River. Fortunately, I already got that specific one replaced uh, on insurance. Same drone straight across the board. Uh, so I'm droning again, but I think if I did get another drone, like, you know, upgrade, I'd probably get a DJI Air 2S. Um, they look super sick, but that probably won't be for a long time unless, I don't know, I come up on a lot of money for some reason. <laughs> so now we got a bit of a hypothetical. Um, this one's from Abe. I met Abe at Lake Louise this spring. He helped me film a video out of just the kindness of his heart and sent me the footage and uh i had just met him that day so huge shout out to abe i really appreciated that um he asked do you think you could beat up 105 year olds i'm definitely more of a lover not a fighter so uh i don't think i could necessarily bring myself to do it but that said physically i uh, yeah i think i could pull it off okay another one from serge i hope i'm saying it right i'm not actually super sure but it, i thought it was either serge or sergey you can let me know in the comments if you see this but i, I googled it i'm pretty sure it's serge Favorite ski hill? This is a bit of a lame answer because, you know, I don't know. Some people might say this is a lame answer, but I'm going to say Whistler Blackcomb. I guess it's my favorite. It's not lame. It's just what I like. But anyways, it's just as it everything. It's like some of the best snow, great park all year long. Like I love Whistler Blackcomb. Like it's, I think it's big for a reason. Like there's a reason why so many people want to come here. It's just the best. And just how many great snowboarders are here too is really cool. Like the fact that you get to see amazing people riding the park and yeah, I'm going with Whistler Blackcomb. But I should shout out Red because Red is a very fun hill and I do love going home to that. And actually Sun Peaks as another BC favorite. Um, they're really fun. They have a really good top to bottom park. I also really like Breckenridge, but only for their park. I don't like really riding there except for their park. So most of this is judged off of parks. So you should take that heavily into consideration. <laughs> okay, but yeah, Whistler Blackcomb, final answer. So now we got one from Dan Stevenson. I don't know Dan's exact title. I want to call him like a creative director, but it's, it's probably something like that at uh, Pangea. I've uh, recently signed with Pangea. They're kind of like a half agency, half creative production house. And um, they're just getting up and going, but they've been really good to me. And I'm definitely stoked to be a part of it. So Dan asks, when you close your eyes and dream of winter, what do you see? Um, I tend not to think about it too much when I am not in the winter, just because uh, I like to say I'm very focused here because I get too excited if I don't. But I'll... I'll close my eyes and we'll we'll see what I see. Okay, I see peak trail lineup actually. A bunch of smiling faces, a bunch of stoke. Now I see a really good indie poke. I mainly just feel really happy and really excited. And there's that feeling that I get from snowboarding where I feel like, I don't know, I'm kind of like myself more than any other time and, and I'm just expressing myself. That's kind of something I really like about snowboarding. I don't get in many other things. So yeah, that's what comes to mind. Eric, uh, he asks, most unique place you've ever ridden? Um, I've been fortunate to ride in a bunch of really cool places throughout, you know, BC and some places in the States as well as Australia and Europe. Whistler tends to have it all. And I'd say most unique place is probably the Whistler Glacier in the summer. Like, especially Especially when I came out for Camp Champs when I was super young, that was like the most insane park with all the good riders. And it's like July and you're snowboarding and it's super hot out. You go from like having so much fun snowboarding on the hill, which is, you know, of course, traditionally just winter activity to like hanging out at the lake, you know, a couple hours later. So that's probably the most unique and it's probably one of the most fun. It was really cool. And we're ending it off with a technical question. The last one from Serge and that's camera or reverse camera. So I think they both have their place. I think if you want to become a really like technically good snowboarder, camber is the way to go. A camber snowboard holds its edge much better, having the contact points actually be like out at the end of the board. So if you're actually really trying to like rail a turn or get a good takeoff or do the things you want to do, you're going to want a camber snowboard. There is like some camber reverse camber blends, like some of the power boards that are really cool, which is like camber underfoot and then just like a rocker nose that I've, I haven't ridden personally too much, but I know a lot of people really enjoy them. The only time I would recommend someone to get a reverse camber snowboard is if you're maybe just like super casual, maybe ride two or three times a year and don't really have a lot of time to commit to snowboarding. You definitely hook edges a lot less on a cam on a reverse camber snowboard, which is the great reason for them and can make your day actually a lot nicer because you're not just hooking edges. You can just kind of butter around, have a super fun day. And so if you're like just a casual boarder, then yeah, I think they're great um, for that. But if you ever really want to like really snowboard well, then I would say jump on a camera board and just learn how to manage it because it's going to do you better in the long haul. So yeah, that's the opinions of a 24 year old kid. I don't really know much, but I'm happy to be here answering things that I don't know much about. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, honestly, feel free to ask any question you want. I may not be able to answer it. 
I may just tell you, I don't know, but I just love to hear where you guys are at. And I just want to connect more with you and try and provide you some sort of value. So please let me know what you like, what you don't like. Yeah. I just want to thank every one of you for being here. We've actually been growing quite a bit this summer, which is cool. Super stoked to be taking this on. And uh, yeah, this is just another addition to the channel and to try and kind of build it up and just have more content on here for us to all enjoy. Cause this is fun for me too. I, as much as I struggle with these videos, I, I do like making them. Okay. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I'll, uh, I'll see you next week. See you later.